Uh, hey, uh, fish people. This is my contest entry for Ron Sovine. Or Sovine. Um, it's doing a contest. You can win a CO2 regulator. Very, very generous prize. He's asking for people to make a video on the best way to use CO2. You know, how to set it up and, and stuff like that. So, I was just going to go over a few points. Um,. I love CO2. I run CO2. Uh, um, basic stuff, real quick. Setup. You know, here's the basic setup. Mine's not so basic, but you know, you have your CO2 bottle. Um, your regulator screws into your bottle. Simple stuff. Uh, make sure everything on your regulator is all closed up before you screw it on. Um, screwed on, there should be, they, they no longer actually recommend Teflon tape, which was new to me, but at the welding shop, they straight up said don't use Teflon tape, use a, uh, a washer, you know, one of these guys, it's a, it's a plastic washer, you would think this doesn't do a whole lot, but it does, um, so there's a washer in between this and this, um, you've got your gauges, uh, one's your tank pressure, one's your working pressure, um, this is how you control the working pressure. This is how you control the, you know, fine tune it, like someone else mentioned. You want to use this before you use this. I, I've got a six way setup, so I, I'm a little bizarre that way because if I'm using high pressure and low pressure right diffusers, I, I, I make a constant working pressure and do everything else with this. Um, solenoid, this turns it on and off. Uh, you know, I hooked that up to the same power strip I have my lights on. Technically speaking, if you wanted to get better use out of your CO2, you would have this on a timer that turned on maybe an hour before your lights on to get the, the water saturated with CO2 before your plants, you know, get woken up and want to start using it. I don't do that, but, you know, technically that would be a little bit better. Um... You know, I, I assume that you guys know how to use these, but this unscrews, you put the tube through that, and there's a little nipple on there, stick on the nipple, screw it on, and it's pressure lock. Um, pretty basic. Uh, I do recommend that when you use a CO2 system, you have, you know, a bubble counter is good, and a uh, check valve. So I've got, you know, my check valve, these are actually check valve bubble counters all in one. I don't have them filled with solution, but there's my check valves. Uh, different diffusion methods. I, I've got them all. So here's a fluval ceramic stone. You know, this is not something super crazy, super nice. There are definitely better ones out there, but it does a good job. Nice, fine bubbles. Uh, most of them get blown around before they make it to the top, so I, I'm getting pretty decent diffusion through that. That's, that's what I like. Uh, that in combination with, you know, a water mover, I, it works great for me. Um, but here's some other methods. Uh, over here I have the do-it-yourself, 100% diffusion, stick a power head in the top of a bottle. Uh, really easy, you do get 100% diffusion out of your CO2, but at the same time, you can't always run as much CO2 as you want. Uh, this bottle will eventually fill up with CO2 up until about here during the day and it'll keep doing this bubbling action and you know if you look down here there's no bubbles coming out but there's water being pushed down through the bottom while I have, where I have holes drilled. So the CO2 is getting into the water, it is getting diffused, it's very very efficient but you've got to have a big bottle on your tank and a power head strapped to the side and uh, if I just wanted more CO2, a higher, a higher CO2 level, if I just cranked up the CO2, this bottle is just going to fill up. And that doesn't mean that I'm getting more into the water. It just means I'm getting more into this bottle. Uh, so somewhat hard to regulate the, the levels there. Um, another thing you can do, power head, stick a, your CO2 hose directly into the power head. This is very inefficient. Very, very inefficient. I don't know if you can tell, but those are really big bubbles. Uh, even coming out there pretty quick, they're going straight to the top. I, I, this is convenient. I would not recommend this. Um, 
There is something else you can do similar to this. You can actually take the hose and if you put it on the bottom, you know, there's no little hookup for that, but if you put it on the bottom, it gets chopped up by the impeller and it works much, much better. Still not super efficient, but it works much better. Uh, I'll show that ju in just a second, but first, there's this guy. Uh, this is a weird kind of combination of, I should have cleaned that, but it's a ladder and, and like this one down here. So what this is doing is it's pulling CO2 in. The CO2 is actually getting sucked around a ladder into a big open chamber in the center where it gets pushed up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, this also shoots water this way so that diffused water's not just exiting the bottom but going out this way. This is very efficient. If you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's pretty much no bubbles coming out of this. And you know, I, I am running a decent amount of CO2 into it. It's, it's very efficient at diffusing the CO2. I don't like it. Um, it's big, it's ugly. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that, that enjoys watching, you know, the bubbles go up the ladder. So for me, I, I don't like it, but it is very efficient. It works great. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, so I'm gonna hook up a couple more options so you can see them and I'll be right back. Um, cheap Chinese diffuser. Uh, puts out a lot of bubbles. They're really big. They go up fast. Um, there are really nice glass diffusers that look like this, but difference between a cheap Chinese diffuser and a little quality one. I uh, don't highly recommend these cheap guys, but um, what you can do is, you know, put that under your power head. And still not super crazy efficient. There are a bunch of big bubbles that are getting up out of there, but. Um, you know, hard to see, but they're, they're going to the power head and they're getting chopped up. And once they come out of the power head, they're much finer. Still not as small as a, a better, you know, ceramic diffuser. Those bubbles are still bigger than just a standard bubble diffuser, but uh, it's much smaller than coming out of here. Um, so that's, you know, that's an option. I've done that before and that, that works decently. Um, other things to consider. Uh, other things to consider are how to monitor your your CO2 flow rate and how much do you need. Uh, you, you don't need all your plants purling all the time. You know, if, if you've got a decent amount of CO2, your plants are going to purl under high light. Just because they're not purling doesn't mean you're not running enough CO2. Um, but at the same time, if they are purling, you've got a decent amount of CO2. So you're probably running enough. If your fish are gasping at the top of the surface, good indicator that you're running too much CO2. Um, there's a bunch of different ways people control CO2. Uh, at the shop, we actually use pH monitors. I really don't like that practice because many, many things influence the water's pH. And if you've got, you know, it's a good safety measure. So, so I understand when people put a pH monitor on their um, solenoid to turn their CO2 off, if it, if it just drops extremely, you know, quickly or something. And if it's just, if your tank's bottoming out. Uh, let me cover that real quick. CO2 tanks are filled with liquid. And there's a small area where that liquid turns to gas before it comes out. Uh, it's very stable this way. It, it, it releases at a very, generally a very constant pressure. At the very last stage of your CO2 tank, it, it does something called, they call it bottoming out. Uh, there's, no, there's no liquid left. And the very last bit of liquid all turns into a vapor at once and the pressure skyrockets. If you have a dual stage regulator, not so big of a deal. But if you have a single stage regulator, which are most of the cheaper regulators, and I do believe the one being offered, the Milwaukee, is just a single stage regulator. You know, I run a single stage regulator. It's not a terrible thing. It's what most people run. Uh, but it, w when, when the pressure increases at the very bottom of your tank, when all of this liquid is turning to a gas real quick, you get a massive expulsion of CO2 and it can be really fast, it can be very dramatic, it can outgas tanks, 
You know, I've seen people whose whole tanks just die uh, real quick because of that. So if you have a pH monitor, a pH controller that, that's monitoring your water's pH and it's hooked up to the solenoid, if that happens, your solenoid turns off and, you know, your fish don't die. So that's a really great use of one of those. But to just control the daily flow rate of CO2, it's not that great because there's a lot of different things that influence uh, water's pH. And if I set my, you know, if my tank is generally at 6.5, and I want to drop it to 6.3 with CO2. For one, that's not a great indication of how much CO2 is in, in the water, because CO2 is interacting with everything else. Um, but, but what if, you know, I just put some driftwood in there and my water changes naturally to 6.3? Now I'm not going to have any CO2 running, just because the water changed. Uh, which, what, what is much, much more accurate and easier to use is a drop checker like this. You, you put a little indicator solution in there, and what this is doing is it's not measuring the pH of the water. It's measuring the pH of the checker solution. Or that's what you're looking at. And the pH of this checker solution is dependent upon the off-gassing that's happening in the empty portion of the drop checker. So there's gases in this water. The gases off-gas into this empty chamber. And the pH fluctuation of those gases indicates on the solution. So this is actually checking the gases in the water, which is what you care about. You know, how much CO2 is in the water versus the acidity of your water. So that, that's much more accurate. They're real easy. You know, it goes by a color chart. Mine's not always green, but I still have enough CO2. Um, way better way, in my opinion, of, of checking your CO2 levels than by checking the pH of your water or having a pH controller. Uh, you know, a lot of people have argued that with me for some reason, that because they spent a bunch of money on a fancy piece of equipment, and it's an awesome piece of equipment, um, that it's better, and it's it's just not. Um, sorry for those out there that disagree, but I'm going to have to disagree. Uh, this is a much better way. Um, also, when it comes to bottoming out your tank, if you don't want your tank to bottom out, there's one easy, easy way to prevent that. Uh, weigh your tank. That's the only way to know how much CO2 is in your tank. This gauge that measures the pressure in your tank, if my tank is completely full, if it's half empty, that's going to be the exact same. The only time that's going to change is if my tank is bottoming out at the very, very last moment, and chances are I'm not going to be home to check that. Um, but the best way to know how much is left in your tank is if I weigh that tank empty and it weighs 10 pounds and it's a 15 pound CO2 tank, then it's going to weigh 25 pounds full. So I'm putting 15 pounds of CO2 in there. So if I know what it weighs empty, it weighs 10 pounds empty, I can just wait every now and then. You know, when I get to the 11 pound mark, I'm going to go fill it up because I don't want to bottom my tank out. Um, really, really easy way to know how much CO2 you're, is in your tank. And really the only way to know how much CO2 is in your tank is to weigh it. Uh, sorry if this is getting long. So what have I not covered? CO2 is awesome. Helps your plants grow. Um, definitely helps the carpeting plants. You do need to run CO2 in combination with how much light you have. Higher the light, the more CO2 you want to run. Uh, you don't want it to vary. If you're running a whole bunch of CO2 for a month straight and then you go a week without any CO2, your plants are going to go, I had my metabolism all ramped up. Uh, what'd you do? You just stopped, you cut me off. You essentially stopped feeding them all of a sudden. And, and they were used to eating a ton. And um, they can't adjust to that as fast as the algae in your tank can. Even if your tank looks like it has no algae, there's some in there. And the algae will take off much faster. It'll, it'll recover much faster than your plants will. So you'll get an algae outbreak you know, if you stop using CO2 after a while you know, suddenly stop using CO2. Um, keep it consistent. Uh, I would not go by bubbles per second. It's a decent, you know, it's a good indication of how much CO2 you're using out of your tank, but it's not a good indication of how much CO2 is getting into your water because all that really relies on your diffusion method. You could have the exact same amount of CO2 in your water in same size tanks running seven bubbles per second compared to one bubbles per second. You know, it, if you had better diffusion on the one bubble per second. Um, 
So I wouldn't go by that. Go by a drop checker. You know, that's the best way to, to know how much you're running. Uh, look at your tank. If everything's purling way too much, you know, you're probably one running way too much CO2. Uh, if everything's purling a little bit and none of your fish are gasping, awesome. Uh, also, do check your pH levels because CO2 forms carbonic acid and that will, you know, impact your your uh, your water pH. Um, other stuff when it comes to CO2 tubing, you really don't need it. I, you know, by by all means, go for it. It's much better. But you can use standard airline tubing. It's not gonna all off glass out. Um, you know, you can check that. Uh, I checked it. I, I put a bubble checker a foot away from, you know, a foot away, and I put, I ran 20 feet of tubing and put one over there, and guess what? It was the same bubble per second at both places. So if I was losing all my gas, that would have been drastically different. Uh, it, it will turn white, it will turn brittle, it does get ugly after a while, it's not going to hurt your fish, but by all means get the expensive stuff if you want, um, much, much nicer, it's just more expensive. Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling because this is getting long, but uh, there's a little bit of CO2 info, I uh, hope it was helpful, hope your tanks are doing well. And if you haven't, check out Ron Sovian's contest and his channel. He's got cool stuff. Um, bye, guys.